twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Pepsodent presents The Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. With the music of Felix Mills. Produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. There's a new Pepsodent toothpaste now. Yes, a new improved Pepsodent with a cleaner, brighter taste that means cleaner, brighter teeth. Try it. Taste it. Compare it. No matter how many brands you tried or how faithfully you brushed, see if your teeth aren't noticeably brighter in just one week after you change to new, improved Pepsodent toothpaste. You see, new Pepsodent toothpaste contains twice as much irium, the exclusive cleansing ingredient. New Pepsodent toothpaste with twice as much irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull, uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. Try it. Taste it. Compare it. And now Pepsodent presents Herbert Marshall as the man called X, international troubleshooter who flies the ocean at the drop of a hat, who charms the ladies, but is death on crooks. Herbert Marshall as the man called X. Well, all the reviews were good. I know that every single paper came in all the reviews. Mr. Thurston, did you notice that girl in the chorus? I noticed a lot of them, Pago. Anyone specific in mind? Well, personally, I prefer that brunette in the first row, you know, second from the left. Don't you mean the one second from the right? Uh, left? R right? N now you've mixed me all up. Uh oh, there's the buzzer. Yes, let's go back in. Maybe the second act will clear up your problem. Now let's see, left, right. Darling, darling. I beg your... Oh, darling. Yes? Oh. Well, this is very pleasant. Oh, darling, it's been so long. Yeah, it certainly has. I, I simply can't believe it's you. I'm not so sure about it myself. Darling, you'll never know how wonderful it is seeing you. May I kiss you again? By all means. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you. But now, lovely one, perhaps... Hey, you! Take your filthy hands off her. I beg your pardon. You heard me. For two cents, I'd poke you in the nose. I'll gladly do it for nothing. Oh! Right on the button, Mr. Thurston. Who is he? Haven't the slightest idea. Huh? Well, m maybe the lady knows. Hey, she's gone. Well, easy come, easy go. You never told me about her, Mr. Thurston. Who is she? I never saw her before in my life. Now, let's see. I take a couple of extra shirts. Why are you being so mysterious, Mr. X? Why, why don't you tell us where we're going? We're going. Well, I mean, you and me. Well, I guess that's all I'll need. Pagan, my friend, take care of yourself. Try to keep out of mischief, will you? Wait a minute, Mr. Thurston. What's the answer? Goodbye, Pagon. But, but you know you always take me with you. In fact, they usually get there first. So long, and when you leave, don't forget to lock the door after you. Mr. Thurston, you can't do this to me. Mr. Thurston! Now arriving at ramp two. Flight number 14 now leaving for Paris from ramp six. Flight 14 leaving for Paris from ramp six. Attention, please. Will Mr. Pagon Zellschmidt please... Oh, no, not Pagon. Not all the way to Paris. Pagon, it's sometimes embarrassing, but I must admit I admire your ingenuity. In that case, Mr. Thurston, you'll be only too glad to reimburse me for the extra ten dollars I had to slip to the passenger agent. Well, I suppose I may as well pay up now. Otherwise, our conversation on the way to Paris will be pretty monotonous. I know what we can talk about. Yes? Look, Mr. Thurston, you're not taking a holiday? No. Yes. Well? Pagon, did you happen to notice the lavalier she was wearing? Uh-huh. A clue. Who's Lavalier? A girl doesn't usually wear such a magnificent piece of jewelry like that. Unless she... Uh, wait a minute. Now, let me guess. I... I have it. The lady who kissed you right in the lobby. Then you did notice the Lavalier. 
She was so ravishing, I didn't see anything but her. Too bad. Why? I'd like to get a better look at that, Lavalier. Well, I, I don't blame you, but, but you said you didn't know her. How are you going to find her? By simply not letting her out of my sight. Hmm? Pagan, why do you think I took this particular play? Mr. Thurston, we've been walking around in circles so long, my feet are dizzy. So you're not enjoying yourself, Pagan? Parks, museums, Napoleon's bed. Who cares about Louis XVI's snuff box anyway? Louis XVI? But he's dead, isn't he? What would you suggest we do, Pagan? I'll come down to brass tacks, Mr. Thurston. How you can spend a week in Paris and not even approach that beautiful woman is more than I can bear. It has taken a certain amount of restraint. You know where she lives. You know where she eats. You know where she shops. What's stopping you? I don't imagine the lady would be too pleased if she knew I'd followed her here. But she wouldn't recognize you, Mr. X. That is, unless you kissed her. Hmm, maybe you've got something there. Yes, let's see what happens. And now, mademoiselle, may I show you the latest thing in bus blouses? Merci, no. Uh, perhaps a culotte that is so chic for bicycling this summer. Merci, monsieur, but that will be all. Certainement, such a pleasure to serve you, mademoiselle. Bonjour. Darling. I beg your pardon. Oh, darling, it's so wonderful seeing you again. But I don't understand. I didn't either. Oh, it's you. Yes, the man in the lobby. But how do you happen to be in Paris? The funny thing, that's just what I was going to ask you. Then this really is a coincidence. I couldn't think of a happier one. Well, monsieur, I am happy. This gives me a chance to explain. Why explain? But really, monsieur. Uh, monsieur... Ken Thurston's my name. I'm Lina Baril. Monsieur Thurston... I really don't go around kissing strangers in theater lobbies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm awfully glad it happened once, though. Thank you. You see, monsieur, I was a little desperate. I needed a friend, but I was a stranger there. I knew no one. You made a friend. I was very aggressive, I'm afraid. Yes. <laughs> it was a gamble. I had no way of knowing how you could respond. Mademoiselle, you underestimate yourself. I uh, still have not explained, monsieur Thurston. That man you knocked down, I had to get away from him. Someone you knew well? No, someone I detested. I was very unhappy when he turned up in New York. That night in the theater, he became abusive. You were very kind to play out my little drama with me. Well, perhaps we could rehearse another scene. At dinner tonight. That's nice of you. And I would be ungrateful if I did not accept. But, monsieur, it would be impossible tonight. Tomorrow? Perhaps the day after tomorrow? Good. May I call you? It would be simple for me to get in touch with you, monsieur. That will be simple, because I promise you I won't leave the Hotel Grand Palace until you do. And then what did she say, Mr. Thurston? Oh, she explained that it wasn't habitual, Pagan. Then what did you say, Mr. Thurston? I told her I understood. Then what did she say? Tell you later, Pagan. Yeah? Ready on your call to New York, Monsieur Thurston. Thank you. Go ahead, New York. Uh, hello. Hi, Chief. Ken Thurston, what the devil are you doing in Paris? Sorry I didn't check with you, Chief, but it was sort of personal. You see, a lady kissed me. A uh, who did what? She was very beautiful, and I didn't know her. That makes sense. Go on. So I thought I ought to know her better. Oh, that's great, Ken. I hope you're having a wonderful time. Not bad so far. Nice of you to call and let me know. Listen, Chief. If a ring shows up at the Bureau, a ring in the shape of a fleur-de-lis, set with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds, will you let me know? Uh, it's a long hold chance... Hold on, Ken. Hold on. Are you psychic? You couldn't know that. Oh, then it has turned up. Day before yet? How did you know? Part of the missing Rotterdam collection, isn't it? Yeah, sure. That's what I thought. Chief, do me a favor. Send that ring over on the first plane. But, Ken... Thanks. Tell you all about it later. Hey, now, wait a minute. Huh? Ken, what in the name of common sense are you doing? Why, Chief, don't you think one kiss deserves another? Bye. Mr. Thurston, I am beginning to smell a rat. 
Already? So you did get a closer look at that lavalier? Sure. And it was a fleur-de-lis set with emeralds, rubies, and diamonds? Uh-huh. You know, Mr. X, this is getting very interesting. You were beginning to worry me, Pagan. But now that you have that old familiar gleam in your eye, I'm reassured. Thank you. But what's this got to do with Rotterdam? Pagan, in 1940, when Rotterdam was leveled by Nazi bombs, one of the largest jewelry collections in Europe vanished. Uh Uh-huh. For six years, nobody saw a trace of it. But recently, one at a time, these jewels have been turning up in various parts of the world, especially in America. Why didn't somebody tell me this before? I'm going back to America right away. Too late, Pagan. I have a notion most of those gems are where you can't get at them. In the Bureau. Why, why, you don't think I wasn't thinking of myself, Mr. Thurston. Who else? Oh. Well, goodbye. Just a minute. Did you say something, Mr. Thurston? Pagan, the last guy who tried to get that lavalier got a punch in the nose. Remember? You know, Monsieur Thurston, it's little accidents like this that make life so interesting. Accidents? I see a strange man in New York. Two weeks later, he's sitting with me in a cafe in Paris. That's because you kissed him. (laughs) Monsieur, please. You won't take that kiss too seriously. Would you be here now if I had? It must be what you call instinct or intuition. I must have known at once that I could trust you. You put me at a great disadvantage, Leonore. How do you mean, Ken? Now that you trust me, my hands are sort of tied. (laughs) You know, you're not a stranger. Not anymore. And yet for some reason... I don't know what to talk about. Well, there's music, paintings, books. But let's start with you. Me? I have a confession to make, Leonor. Oh? I came over on the same plane with you. You did? Then why didn't you... I had a strange idea that perhaps you'd think I was following you. Why should I think that? You're forgetting again. You kissed me. Oh. And you're not going to let me forget that. I can't. I guess we'd better find something else to talk about. We could talk about another favorite subject of mine. Jewelry. You're a collector? An admirer. That uh, lavalier you're wearing is beautiful. You like it? Very much. I'm glad it was a gift. Such a magnificent gift. My fiancé. Oh. Ken, do you mind? I told him you and I would be here for dinner. Why should I mind? I'd hoped you'd understand. He was very anxious to thank you for what you did for me. <laughs> That's nice. That's <laughs> very nice. Am I so amusing? No, no, Leonor. You're not amusing. Oh, no, you're wonderful. Oh, I see. You're very kind. You invite me to dinner. So I reward you with what you call it, my boyfriend. That's the general idea. I'm sorry, Ken. Why be sorry? I'm anxious to meet him. I'd like to congratulate him on his... Girlfriend. We should be here soon. In the meantime, shall we dance? Love. Dancing solves a great many problems, Ken. Yes, it brings people together. And you don't have to think about what to say next. You just follow the leader. I put it another way, Leonore. When anyone follows as gracefully as you do... That's something to talk about. Thank you. Oh, there's a tier. Come, Ken. Bonsoir, Lenore. A tier. I want you to meet Monsieur Thurston. A tier, C'est un plaisir, Monsieur. Hello. Um, sit down, do. Merci. Monsieur Thurston, it is extremely fortunate that you are in Paris so that I might express my gratitude. Oh? Leonore has told me about how gallant you were to her in New York. Oh, not at all. Matter of fact, it was... Leonore's own quick thinking. Leonore? Oh, oh yes. Uh, she uh, she appealed to you for help, didn't Etier, she? I, I was going to oh, tell no, you... you would have been very proud of her. She handled the situation perfectly. So? See, this fellow made a nuisance of himself, so we got rid of him. Very expertly, I understand. Have a drink, Mr. Safier? Uh, merci, monsieur, but I did not mean to interfere with your evening. I merely wish to pay my respects. Perhaps I may return the courtesy someday, Monsieur Thurston? I wouldn't worry about that. It has been a pleasure. Au revoir, monsieur. Adieu, Leonore. 
It's very considerate of your fiancé to let us have this evening together. Ken, I did not tell him everything. Oh? I did not tell it yet that I kissed you. Mm, well, perhaps it's just as well. You think so, Ken? Yes, you know, we can keep that little scandal to ourselves. Did you expect someone else, Leonor? Of course not, darling. You enjoyed yourself tonight? It, it was pleasant. This Mr. Thurston, he is charming, isn't he, my dear? He's very nice. But naturally he would be. You didn't mind my going to dinner with him, did you, darling? <laughs> ah, Cherie, you are lovely, you are generous, you are sweet, but... Ma petite, you are also very naive. Huh? Listen to me. This man, this Thurston, he didn't just happen to be in Paris, you know. What did you? He didn't come to Paris, my angel, only because you are here. He came to Paris because he is the man called X. No matter how many toothpaste you tried, no matter how good a job you think your present brand is doing, change now to the new Pepsodent toothpaste. And in just one week, see if you don't find new brightness in your teeth, new sparkle in your smile. Yes, there's a new improved Pepsodent toothpaste now with a cleaner, brighter taste that means cleaner, brighter teeth. You see, a new Pepsodent has twice as much irium, the exclusive cleansing ingredient that Pepsodent and only Pepsodent can give you. New Pepsodent with twice as much irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull. It loosens film and floats it away, quickly, easily, safely. So new Pepsodent brings new brightness to your teeth. It cleans better between teeth, leaves your breath cleaner, fresher too. No wonder more people than ever before are using Pepsodent today. So despite any other brand you've tried, Change now to new, improved Pepsodent toothpaste. And in just one week, see the difference. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See how Pepsodent uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. And now to return to Pepsodent's Man Called X, starring Herbert Marshall. Mr. X has gone to Paris because a beautiful lady kissed him in the lobby of a New York theater. That is because the lady, Leonor Barrill, was wearing a lavalier, which Mr. X identified as part of the missing Rotterdam collection. In turn, Leonor's fiancé, Etienne Safier, has been identified. Ken Kirsten is the man called X, so now the score is even. But Mr. X does not know this. At the moment, he's in his Paris hotel room when there's a knock at the door. Yeah, come in. Hello, Mr. Thurston. I thought you were leaving Paris, Pagan. On the contrary, Mr. Thurston, Paris. I love it as much as in the summer as in the spring. Well, Paris will be glad to know that. <laughs> Mr. X, I'm happy to inform you, but I warn you it'll cost you money. When didn't it? Mr. X, would you be interested in a stick pin? Not particularly. I mean a lady's stick pin. Mm, that depends upon the lady. Uh, if it was a fleur-de-lis set with diamonds, rubies, and emeralds? Congratulations, Pagon. Hand it over. I haven't got it. <laughs> but you could get it if you had the money. Of course, and, and a set of earrings to match. Ah, oh, Mr. Thurston, it's scandalous, the prices they're asking. Plus your commission. They won't even dilly-dilly. It's, it's a quick deal, you know, cash under the table or nothing. Who is it, Pagon? Somebody you don't like. Oh? In fact, you punched him in the nose once. Well. He didn't, rec didn't recognize me, but, but that doesn't matter because he works for another man. By the name of Safia. Yes, by the name of... How did you know? My spies, Pagan. Mr. X, you have somebody else working for you. How could you? 
Well, for one thing, she's more beautiful than you are. Mr. X! Scram big on that, will you go, please? But I just... Shut up. You want that commission? Get out of here quickly, the back way. Commission? In that case, Mr. Thurston... And no eavesdropping. Come in. Leonore. Are you busy, Ken? Come in. This is more than I'd hoped for. Please sit down. I hate to see you. Fine. I'm confused. I mean, I had to talk to someone. Ken, it's finished. Between a chair and me. Leonore. He's jealous, Ken. Of you. Because I took you out to dinner? I, I've been honest with you, haven't I? Yes. I've been honest with Etienne also. I cannot lie. I cannot dissemble. Etienne could read the truth in my eyes at once. Do you know what I'm trying to say, Ken? Or must I? Must you what? Darling. Darling, don't make me say it. Darling? Yes, Ken, from that first moment. I didn't realize until I said it for me. With that first kiss, the whole world turned inside out. There was nothing left but you. Leonor. That first kiss. I was just pretending then. But, Ken, I don't want to pretend anymore. Darling. Darling, darling, darling. Nevertheless, my sweet, that was an awfully good job of pretending. Ken. You are still pretending, aren't you? What do you mean, King? Is it about time you told me the real reason for all this? You don't believe me? No. I hate you. I don't believe that either. <laughs> don't, Leonor. No. No, I don't hate you, King. But you were told that you should hate me, weren't you? Now, you don't have to answer. Just, just listen. Ever see this ring before? Ring? It matches my lover here. Yes. And with a little trouble and a good deal more money, I'm sure I could produce a pin and probably earrings to fill out the set. What are you trying to tell me? Will you mind the outline of a long story? Go on, King. Okay. It starts in 1940. A million dollars in jewels disappeared in the ruins of Rotterdam. Rotterdam? That... That ring. That Lavalier. Go on. I'll go back a few years. In 1932... The Countess Lamoureux lost a diamond at her Riviera Villa, an extraordinary stone that should have been in a museum. A man was accused, but evidence was only circumstantial, and he was acquitted. Sometime later, in 1936, Lord Larchmont's fabulous emerald-headed cane was stolen at Brighton. A man was held, but later released for lack of evidence. I could give you other instances if you want. Same man? Same man. Different names. I could show you his photograph if you wish. No, Ken. Oh, I've been very cheap. I came here to... He wanted me... To... Oh, there's no reason for you to believe me, but... I didn't know. I believe you. Here, Leonor, will you... Will you wear this ring? But I... Memory of a kiss? Oh, Ken... Leonor? Yes, Etienne. And how did our inquisitive friend, Mr. X, respond to your blandishments? He... I don't know, Etienne. Don't know? Come now, Leonor, surely you could tell that. Did he ask any leading questions? Questions? About me. He knows about you, Etienne. So? He knows... He knows you're my fiancée. Oh. Did he by any chance mention that lavalier? Oh, well, Yes? Yes. He thought it was very beautiful. Is that all? Well? He said it was very beautiful. You told me that. Here. Let me see it. Take off that lovely ear. But you gave it to me, Etienne. Are you afraid I won't return it, my chérie? Oh, no, Etienne. You may have. <laughs> where did you get that? What? You know it. I'm talking about that ring. Tell me. Where did you get it? Etienne, you're hurting me. Where did you get that ring? <laughs> 
wanted me to wait. Oh. Right. Out with it. What does he know? Hey, Chief, please. Does he know why I gave you that lovely ad- Why I sent you to America? I don't know why you did. No, you don't. But you served me well without knowing. Now that you do know... Uh, my precious, it is a... Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> You, what good? Ride on the schnozola, Mr. X. He's out cold. Tell the gendarmes to come in, Pagan. With pleasure. You know, I, I don't know why it is, Leonore, but every time I'm with you, I, I seem to poke somebody in the nose. Mr. X? I've been knocking my brain in, trying to figure out why that man gave the lady the lavalier since he wanted to sell it. It was the easiest way to get it to America. Once she was there, a stooge could steal it from her, and Sapphire would still be in the clear. If only she hadn't kissed you, eh? That pig on is what is called one of the imponderable factors in the case. It's a funny name for a kiss. Come in, Leonore. I'm not Leonore. By golly, you're not, are you, Chief? Nice flight over? Delightful. I just couldn't wait to get here and find out what you've been doing. You got here just in time. Oh, great work, Kim. Great work. Now, what do we do? You can have your choice, the bowel mask, the moulin rouge. Huh? Don't worry, Chief. I'll line up a beautiful evening for you. That is, if Leonore can find a friend. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall, will return in just a moment to tell you about next week's exploit of the man called X. But first, a word about Pepsodent. Try it. Taste it. Compare it. Change now to new Pepsodent toothpaste, and in just one week, see the difference. Yes, new Pepsodent has a cleaner, brighter taste that means cleaner, brighter teeth. New Pepsodent toothpaste with twice as much irium removes the film that makes your teeth look dull uncovers the natural brilliance of your smile. And our Pepsodent star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Next week, Mr. X is slipping away to a quiet little island off the coast of Maine to enjoy a peaceful vacation, sleep, rest, a little fishing, perhaps. Ah, yes, there are four nice ladies, two of them young and very beautiful, all very idyllic. But you know what happens when a busman takes a holiday. As usual, Leon Velasco as Pagan will come along and complicate matters. So join us, won't you, when next I return as the man called X. Good night. President's Man Called X is written by Milton Merlin with music composed and personally conducted by Felix Mills. The entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. So until next week, same time, same station, this is Wendell Niles reminding you to change to Pepsodent toothpaste now. For Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains irium. Mr. Herbert Marshall is soon to be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, The Razor's Edge. All characters and incidents used on this program are fictitious. Any resemblance to actual persons or incidents is purely coincidental. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.